Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. It's another Wednesday, another good day to bake. Today I'll show you how to make Chelsea buns. You can use this recipe to make cinnamon buns or whatever buns you like. This basic enriched dough can be filled with anything really, it's up to you. But today I'll show you the good old Chelsea buns, filled with dried fruit, mixed peel and mixed spice. So let's start with the equipment that you will need. You'll need a digital probe to measure the temperature of your water and your final dough, digital scales to weigh all the ingredients, a bowl to mix it all in, a dough scraper which is always handy, a rolling pin, a sharp serrated knife to cut your buns, a spatula to mix your stuff with, a brush for your butter and a baking tray. Now for the ingredients, you'll need flour, water and yeast to create a flying sponge, more on this in a minute. Make sure your water is about 25 degrees. But if it's summertime and super hot, make sure the water is slightly cooler. Now for the main dough, you'll need more flour, sugar, softened butter, salt. And for your filling, you'll need dried fruits, ideally soaked, but not wet. You'll need some sugar with mixed spice. And you also need some softened butter for spreading. Now let's start by making our flying sponge. A flying sponge is essentially a pre-ferment, like a polish they use for ciabatta, but in this case, we will ferment it only for one hour or so. And I guess because it's so quick, that's why they call it a flying sponge. So you just add your water to the bowl, then your yeast, disperse it, add your flour, give it a good old mix so there's no more dry bits, cover it and leave it for an hour. If it's cold in your kitchen, it might take a little bit longer, an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. If it's warm in your kitchen, it will come up quite quickly. Always make sure you straight down the sides of your bowl, you don't want any dry pieces of dough in your final recipe. Now cover it and let it proof, and you will know that it's ready when it's come up and it's started collapsing back in on itself. You will see little dimples on the surface of the sponge as the bubbles pop and it collapses. It should be nice and fluffy and full of air. And now we're ready to add the rest of the ingredients, starting with the sugar and the salt. Give it a good mix until the sugar and the salt dissolve completely. So once that's all done we can add our flour. And then give it a good mix again until all the liquid has absorbed into the flour. And there's no more dry bits of dough. You can use your hands, you can use a spatula, it's up to you really. But in a minute, we'll tip the dough out on the table and we will start working by hand. So take your little dough scraper, clean the sides of the bowl down, make sure to collect it all into one piece, tip it out on the table and we'll be ready to work it. You might have noticed that we haven't added our butter yet. And there's a good reason for that. We want to develop the gluten first and then add the fat. If we would add the butter at this stage, it will prevent the gluten from forming. Fats like butter or oil would coat the individual gluten particles and prevent the gluten from forming long strands. That is why shortening is called shortening. Because essentially, when you're adding fat to flour, you are creating shorter gluten strands. But for bread baking, you want long gluten strands. This will give the dough structure and it will trap the fermentation gases inside. So I'm going to show you my preferred kneading method, which I've found is the most efficient and quickest way to develop gluten in a low hydration dough like this. So if you watch my hands, you'll see that I'm using the palm of my right hand to press down and forwards and the fingers of my left hand to fold the piece of dough underneath the palm of my right hand and repeating this process. You want to work it for about five minutes and you'll see it will become nice and smooth 
not sticky at all, nice and elastic. So after about 5 minutes of using a bit of your elbow grease, we'll be ready to tear in the butter. And you will see what I mean by tear. So what you want to do now is take your dough and stretch it out into a massive rectangle. As thin as you can. But then again it's not that important because we'll mess it up in a minute anyway. Just stretch it out, maybe to an inch thick. You can really see now that it's nicely developed. It's super soft, super stretchy. So what you want to do now is get your softened butter. Make sure it's soft, not molten and not hard and chunky. And then using your hands, just spread it out all over the dough. It's not an exact science here. Just spread it out any, any old way. Dimple it in with your fingers mess it around and just don't be shy to get your hands dirty and now comes the really messy part fold over your dough fold it into like a little parcel roll it up and once you've done that start squeezing it and tearing it and at first It'll just be a massive mess. And you might think to yourself now, what the hell am I doing here? This is just messy and it won't turn into anything. But just keep at it and you'll see the result in a minute. Because what we are doing, we are trying to work the butter into the dough. As we have created the gluten already, all we need to do is kind of reform it back. And once you've torn the dough and squished it around, you can start kneading it again just the same way as we did before and after about five minutes you'll start seeing it come back together and turn into a nice smooth dough it should get less sticky and much easier to handle as you go along We can use our little dough scraper to collect any stray pieces of dough back into the dough ball. I'll show you a couple ways of lightly shaping your dough, just to keep it organized and kind of tensioning the surface. You can use the scraper to pull the dough towards yourself and using the stickiness of the dough itself against the table, you'll feel it tightening. Another way of doing this is to flip the dough upside down and fold the sides into the center and go around in a circle until you reach the place where you started. These steps give the gluten structure additional strength. And once you're ready for our first proof, take the temperature of the dough. Ideally it should be about 26 degrees Celsius. If it's more than that, you want to proof it for less time. I proofed it here for 30 minutes and now I'll give it the first fold. Folding achieves two things. It gives the gluten additional structure and also equalizes the temperature. If the dough is too warm inside and too cold on the outside, it will equal out. To perform a fold, tip your dough out on a lightly floured surface, then take the edges and fold them into the center, going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started. Just don't fold it too tight because you don't want to tear it. We have a nice layer of gluten on the top and we want to preserve it. Once we've done that, we can place our dough ball back into a bowl and proof it for another 20-30 minutes. At this point, we can preheat our oven to 180 degrees Celsius with pan. Now after its second proof, we'll be ready to shape our dough. You can see that it's puffed up nicely and when you press it, it still springs back. Now dust your table generously with flour, you don't want this to stick. To be honest, I think I used a little bit too much flour here, but it didn't harm at the end. Just remember, you can use a little bit less. So drop your dough out on the table and just pat it out lightly with your hands to begin with. Don't be too rough on it, just use your fingertips, you don't want to press out any of the fermentation gases. And in a minute, we'll take our rolling pin and start rolling it. And once again, don't press it too hard with the rolling pin, otherwise you'll squeeze out all the air and you'll end up with a pancake basically. You want to work this until it's about a 
kind of a rectangle shape and uh, maybe half an inch thick or so. It doesn't have to be precise. We will stretch it out by hand a little bit later anyway. And as we roll it up, we'll have to stretch it again because it will keep coming up back together slightly. So once you're happy with it, turn it so it's perpendicular towards you and start brushing it with your softened butter. Spread it out evenly all over. But make sure to leave one inch without butter at the top. We will use a little bit of water later to seal the piece of dough up. And next we will sprinkle our sugar mix with mixed spice all over the surface. And at this point, if you want to make just cinnamon buns, just use the double the amount of sugar here and that's all your filling done. So once again spread it out nice and evenly. Now we're ready to add our dry fruits. I like to press them in using the palms of my hands to prevent them from rolling around. And now we are ready to roll. So starting from the bottom, fold over a piece of dough and do it gradually, you don't want to go too fast here. As you go along, as you're rolling it, you will notice that the sides will kind of get narrower. So what you want to do once in a while, just spread them out to get a nice even roll and then just keep going until you've reached almost the top. If you need to stretch it or pull it or press it back together as you go along, do it. You want to create a nice evenly sized roll. Now once you get to this point, you'll see why we left the top piece of the dough uncovered. What you want to do is get some water, just brush it, and then kind of stick the last piece of dough to the rest of the roll to finish it off. Now you'll need a chopping board you want to brush your dough evenly with butter all over. This will prevent the buns from sticking to each other later on whilst baking. Now once it's nice and evenly covered, get your bread knife and make sure it's a serrated knife. This will not work with a regular knife, I promise and you want to use long, even strokes whilst cutting. This will make life much easier for you. We will divide this into 12 equal pieces. The easiest way of doing this is to cut the dough in half, and then each half into half again, and then each of the little quarters into three pieces. This will give you the most even results. Even though it doesn't look very even here, but hey ho, what can you do? Now we're ready to place them on our trays for the final proof. If you have non-stick trays, use non-stick trays. If you don't have non-stick trays, then just line them with a bit of parchment paper. Cover your buns and let them proof for about 30 minutes. Once they're nice and puffed up, get them in the oven. Once they're done, they should be nicely golden brown. Always check the bottom of your buns as well. If they're still a bit soggy on the bottom, flip them upside down and continue baking for another 5 minutes. Now this is an additional step. If you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't want, you can skip it. But what I like to do is, whilst the buns are hot, brush them with some sugar syrup. This will keep them extra soft and it will give them a nice shiny glaze on top.
and once they have cooled down completely, you can cover them with some icing. As if there's not enough sugar in this recipe already. But, you know, we've come this far, might as well do it. There's no real art to this, just do nice, long, even strands. The icing itself is made up of uh, icing sugar and lemon juice. Mix them together until you get the kind of a uh, toothpaste consistency. You can read all the details down in the description. And if you have any questions, write them down in the comments. I'll make sure to answer every one of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.